Hello and welcome to Bounding Into Comics. My name is John Trent. I'm the founder and editor-in-chief at Bounding Into Comics. And today I got a story about Star Wars by High Republic author Justina Ireland bashing white men. So if you don't know, Ireland had previously been announced as the author of the Star Wars The High Republic novel A Test of Courage that will follow the adventures of the Mary Sue character Vernestra Rowe. Not only will she be writing A Test of Courage, but Star Wars and Lucasfilm also recently announced that Ireland will be writing Starlight Stories that will appear in the Star Wars Insider magazine. She will also be penning the young adult novel Out of the Shadows that will also follow Vernestra Rowe, the Padawan Reef Silas, and Avon Staros. So, uh, Justina Ireland's tweet about bashing men came on January 3rd. She took to Twitter where she wrote, Quote, I guess mediocre white men are still going to be on here bragging about their mediocrity as though it's a hilarious anecdote instead of pure assholery. So thanks for establishing that, that baseline early 2021. In a follow-up, she added, imagine writing a 20-tweet thread about outsmarting your nine-year-old. What a waste of perfectly good carbon. So you're probably wondering what in the world she's actually tweeting about. Her tweets are in reference to a number of tweets from podcast host John Roderick, where he detailed that he challenged his nine-year-old daughter to open a can of beans with a can opener. A Roderick would receive some significant pushback on social media that would eventually lead to him issuing an apology and deactivating his Twitter account. On his website, he wrote, my story about my daughter and the can of beans was poorly told. I didn't share how much laughing we were doing, how we had a bowl of pistachios between us all day as we worked on the problem or that we'd both had a full breakfast together a few hours before. Her mother was in the room with us all day and alternately laughing at us and telling us to be quiet while she worked on her laptop. We all took turns on the jigsaw puzzle. He added, I framed the story with me as the asshole dad because that's my comedic persona and my fans and friends know it's a bit. He would later add, I was ignorant and sensitive to the message that my pendant dad comedic persona was indistinguishable from how abusive dads act, talk, and think. He finally concluded the lengthy post with an apology saying, I apologize to my partners, my friends, and to all the people affected by my words for the hurt I caused. So Ireland is specifically referring to one person here, but she decides to bash all white men for the actions of one person she deems uh, inappropriate or bad, dare I say. So um, that's uh, quite interesting, I think, to, to point out. Uh, and this isn't an isolated incident for Ireland. Ichibaka at Disney Star Wars is dumb, documented a number of tweets regarding Ireland's issues with white people and not just white men. Uh, in January, 2020, she responded to a Stephen King tweet. King wrote, the most important thing we can do as artists and creative people is make sure everyone has the same fair shot, regardless of sex, color, or orientation right now. Such people are badly underrepresented and not only in the arts. Ireland responded saying, and this is why this tweet functionally doesn't work. Creators of color, women creators, and queer creators will never get opportunities as long as quality is focused on a white, masculine, hetero default as it constantly is. Uh, I'm not really sure what Stephen King's tweet has anything to do with a white, masculine, or hetero default, but Ireland decided to make an issue of it. In February, she would write, I was today years old when I discovered there was an actual White Lives Matter movement and that they apparently have promotional materials. The caucasity, white supremacy is like the devil. It doesn't need an advocate. So apparently, um, White Lives Matter is equivalent to white supremacy in Justina Ireland's uh, mind. And then she's basically saying it's like the devil. Interesting. Ireland also responded to Barnes & Noble and Penguin Random House launching a diverse editions line that saw classics like Romeo and Juliet and Frankenstein reimagined with black protagonists. She wrote, In honor of Barnes & Noble and Penguin Random House and the terrible decision to literary blackface books that your 11th grade English teacher considered classic would feature a nary a person of color, let's use the diverse editions hashtag to consider what those books would really be like. She then added, white nonsense gets up early, but I get up earlier. Then she said, just kidding, white nonsense never sleeps. Later in February, she tweeted, I wish Netflix would put as much effort into creating shows with black kids as main characters as it does in creating movies and shows with plucky white kids as main characters. Shout out to all the black kids on Netflix shows just trying to live their lives while their white friends bring a mess of effery to their doorstep, she added in a follow-up. In June, she wrote, 
I'm so tired of the lip service of woke white publishing folks who say one thing and then cash in by taking an extra space at the table, like by writing black main characters when they got no business. We see you. Later in June, she wrote, there are so many white people in publishing who are feeling like this is suddenly the moment to be woke, like we're supposed to forget everything they did on the books of black and brown folks for years. In mid-June, she tweeted, Facebook is a trip because it's where you go to learn that all the white people you knew back in the day didn't see you as human until the Today Show told them Black Lives Matter and their local Target burned down. Ireland would also claim that grilling white authors about whiteness would be her dream panel. She responded to a Twitter user who wrote, imagine a panel where we grill white authors about how whiteness informs their work and what they're doing to challenge white supremacy in their fiction. She said, dream panel. Tell me why you decided to make your main character a white man like you. Is it because you're publishing some sort of agenda? In July, she claimed publishing emboldens and facilitates white supremacy and erases racism. She wrote, sitting here thinking about all of the small ways publishing emboldens and facilitates white supremacy and erases racism as one does on a Sunday. And I started thinking once more about Ray Bradbury and way in the middle of the air from the Martian Chronicles. She also wrote, ain't it wild how white people get to be children until they're like 40, but if you're black, people think you should be an adult at 12. In August, she wrote, if you're a white editor working with a black creator, I hope you understand just how hard 2020 has been for black people and keep that in mind when it comes to deadlines and expectations. It honestly feels right now like we aren't allowed as a people to have nice things. In September, she tweeted, "Woo! not gonna lie, every time I see a white young adult author with a young adult with a brown girl on the cover, I cringe a little, like a full body wince, just waiting for the inevitable. She added, I mean, yeah, you can write whatever you want, but history has shown us you're probably gonna F it up, and then it's going to be a whole Twitter thing. And why aren't you tired of this yet? We are. She then added, anyway, everyone who tweeted all excited about winter keep, I hope you're following melanin in young adult. Black people haven't really even gotten a chance to write their own YA fantasies yet. Give us an effing chance. Science fiction author and YouTuber John Della Rose would also point out Ireland has also taken issue with white people in blog posts published to Medium. In one, she wrote, stories like To Kill a Mockingbird and Green Book excuse white audiences from any culpability in racism or the persistence of white supremacy. She went on to explain, they promote an idea that racism exists in a long ago time period with other people and that the barometer barometer for upholding white supremacy and by extension racism is to sling around racial slurs, burn crosses, and cheer for Jim Crow when it isn't. Sometimes all upholding white supremacy requires is, re is rewarding a film about a black man that centers a white point of view, she concluded. So I think uh, Ireland's comments speak for themselves. I don't really have anything to add. My name is John Trent and you've been watching Bounding in Comics. I'll have another video for you tomorrow.